Hey friends, Sarah Peternell here with Family Nutrition Services. I hope that everyone's having a great day. This whole month I've been focusing on men's health and in particular men's uh, health for those who have Hashimoto's. Um, you can check out the blog post on my website new this month. It's all about men and Hashimoto's and um, you know my own clients who are men who have Hashimoto's really are the inspiration for me to focus on this very important topic. I feel like men are often uh, unfortunately overlooked with this very um, important uh, condition that can have uh, obviously a very big impact on their lives. Women are typically the ones um, who are sort of associated with this disease, Hashimoto's, but men also suffer from it and so their needs can be unique. And if you have been reading uh, my blog post or you've been following me on YouTube for a while, you know that one of the subjects that's really important to me is uh, detoxification. And the reason why um, I incorporate this so much into my practice and into my content and everything that I talk about as far as the thyroid goes is that the thyroid is really a gland that is um, kind of like a magnet for toxins in your body. So what I want men to think about, especially if they have Hashimoto's or have been diagnosed with hypothyroidism, maybe without it being Hashimoto's, I'm going to talk more about that in another future video, um, or if there is a strong family history of Hashimoto's and autoimmune disease, I want men to be thinking also about the ways in which they can incorporate more detoxification practices. Now I have another video on YouTube that is about the top uh, few daily things that you can do to really help promote your body's own healthful detoxification. You can watch that video too. But I have had some guys tell me, you know, I feel like that's more for the ladies. All right, so fair enough. What I want to talk to the guys about as far as detoxification, cleaning out the body, releasing toxins from tissues, and also releasing toxins from the thyroid where they tend to get stored. Um, and that can also contribute to the dysfunction of the thyroid are some really basic dietary changes that you can make. And they're gonna seem almost a little bit too obvious. But I think it's a good reminder, especially, like I said, if you've been recently, recently diagnosed with Hashimoto's, or if you think you might be at risk because you have a first degree relative or you've been told that maybe you just have a low functioning thyroid. Let's work to nip this in the bud before it becomes full blown Hashimoto's. So the first thing, and I'm really speaking from experience with the guys I know and also the guys I know who have Hashimoto's, which is that many people who burn out their thyroids do it with caffeine. Um, cheers to that, okay? So a little espresso. I'm drinking a Swiss water process decaf espresso because I do still love the flavor, um, but I don't want the buzz. So I want guys to know that too much caffeine is like revving the engine on your car. Caffeine to the thyroid is like pushing that button all the time um, to just be going, 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 going. Remember that your thyroid gland is actually um, the master regulator of your metabolism, but you can't just sit with your foot on the gas pedal all day long. And caffeine is a stimulant, so caffeine will um, overstimulate your thyroid, and a thyroid that is overstimulated tends to be sort of like a vibrating magnet. Um, it's just going to be pulling in a lot of the toxins from the bloodstream and storing those um, while the metabolism is getting kind of over revved. So cutting back on caffeine, maybe cutting it out altogether for a little while and seeing how you do, or switching to decaf. Find an organic, find cold water pressed, uh, cold water process um, for maybe some healthier alternatives because actually I hate taking coffee away from people, but it's the caffeine and the pesticides and the toxins in your coffee that really can be a problem. The second thing, and again, speaking from experience of a lot of the guys I know, and I don't mean to stereotype because women have some of the same issues too, but guys, if you're unwinding at the end of the day with a beer, a glass of wine, a cocktail, and this habit is becoming maybe too much of a crutch for your stress and your coping mechanisms, I want you to evaluate the importance or maybe the use of alcohol in your life. I don't mean that with any judgment whatsoever. Certainly, if you're just drinking socially and this is not um, you know, a, a problem for you, alcohol can be enjoyed in moderation, but what happens when our body is 
uh, stressed out or sick or begin becoming inflamed um, and dealing with some of the conditions and symptoms and side effects that you may have from Hashimoto's, you can feel pretty terrible. And so sometimes your stress responses can be lowered. That way, when you're dealing with stuff like crazy boss, financials, the household, the kids, the dog, the broken down car, all of the stuff that comes into our daily lives, sometimes guys rely a little too heavily on happy hour. Coming home from the end of a long day and cracking open a beer or maybe going out with the guys and blowing off some steam. But I can tell you that's one way that really, again, adds to that toxic load of the body. Alcohol is difficult for our body to break down. And for men, more than two glasses a day and really, ideally, no more. Oh my God, my dog just burped. <laughs> All right, humor. Uh, sorry for those of you that heard that. My dog just had dinner and then she burped. Um, I was talking about alcohol, and so it breaks down slowly in the body. Our body has to digest it. And then if there are other priorities standing in the way of alcohol, like maybe you stood downwind at the gas station, you were breathing gasoline fumes, you just had your house painted, um, maybe there are medications that are also contributing to your toxic load, your body is going to figure out how to prioritize, and sometimes alcohol gets pushed off. So that can also contribute to your body's overall toxicity, and it can strain your liver. So I've talked about caffeine and alcohol, but also, like a lot of guys I know, sometimes they have sweet tooth, and we can turn towards, all of us, but guys in particular, we can, we, guys can turn towards sugar for energy when they're feeling fatigued and they're feeling run down, because the first problem with men in fatigue is that they don't like to admit when they're tired. It's true. Um, I know a lot of guys like this, and it, it, admitting that you're tired is like, kind of like admitting that you're not you know, productive or you're not a good contributing member of your family or society. And if you're fatigued and you're run down because you have hypothyroidism and or Hashimoto's, you know, that's rough, right? So some guys turn to either stimulation from caffeine or they might turn towards sweets and sugary drinks or foods um, because that sugar gives you energy. As you know, it is a short-lived uh, energy energy burst and it is not sustainable for the long term because as soon as that sugar wears off in your body you're going to experience a sugar crash and sugar overall contributes to toxicity in the body for a couple of reasons a it increases inflammation which just means that the tissues the body the bloodstream are all not functioning as well as they can be the homeostasis is thrown off balance a little bit um, by that inflammatory food which with regular consumption sugar is inflammatory and um, the other thing that's really important to know um, about sugar and detoxification is that sugar disrupts the gut microbiome in your digestive system, which means that your body can't fend off pathogens and other toxins as well if sugar is there to feed the bad bacteria. So cutting back on sugar, if you're using that as a crutch or a stimulant, I mean, I have plenty of clients, both men and women, who tell me that they need to have their sugar fix at like two or three o'clock in the afternoon because that's when they're the most tired. I get it. So instead of reaching for sugar, I want you to try reaching for water or taking a walk or clearing your head in some other way and trying to shake off that afternoon fatigue. Um, certainly we'll, when we're working together, we'll address other causes of fatigue and other um, solutions for fatigue through diet and supplements and lifestyle. But I can tell you that if you're tired and you're just supporting yourself with this false energy of sugar, it is a never ending cycle. So being aware of the sugar that you're consuming, when you're having it, why you're choosing it, and what you can do to replace it to help kind of counterbalance um, a, a more natural energy in your body. Lastly, um, a lot of men that I know don't consume enough fiber on a regular basis. Now, I feel like women are maybe just a slightly bit savvier about fiber because they've maybe been talked to about, um, you know, the changes in their digested habits as it pertains to their hormones and their menstrual cycle. But guys, you don't really have sort of this monthly reminder that you need to be getting plenty of fiber to keep yourself regular. And so... Digestive changes can be one of the first signs that your body is becoming maybe a little bit toxic or overburdened with toxins, chemicals, pesticides, so on and so forth. So I want you to think about how much fiber you're getting every day. This is fiber that, you know, like the, in, the uh, uh, insoluble fibers, like from oatmeal and from whole grains and from vegetables, all the complex carbohydrates um, that really act like a little broom to go through and sweep out um, any of the toxic debris that's in the digestive tract. 
Um, most guys, when I do their diet analysis from their food journal, are only getting around 10 to 15 grams of fiber per day. And what I would like to say is that really you need closer to 40 to 50 grams of fiber per day. So that means including whole grains, preferably gluten-free if you have Hashimoto's, um, uh, gluten-free whole grains and products made from gluten-free whole grains, but not overly processed. They should still have, um, you know, a fiber content. And then also plenty of fresh, raw, cooked, steamed, and fermented vegetables, mainly in the form of the leafy greens, the brightly colored vegetables, um, some starchy vegetables also like sweet potatoes, carrots, beets, etc. But also some wonderful sources of fiber are like artichokes. A lot of people don't think about that as really being a great option, but it can be really wonderful for keeping the digestive system regular. So adding artichoke hearts to salads or to topping on your homemade gluten-free pizza. Um, also um, thinking about maybe some of the other sources of fiber, again, those insoluble fibers like f ground flaxseed or chia seeds um, that, are, that you can add to smoothies and that will easily... Um, be kind of adding to your fiber total of other foods for the day to help boost up your fiber. <clears throat> Last but not least, I just want to say one more thing about water, which is that water is um, vital to all healthy life. And um, if you are kind of running on empty and mostly dehydrated and or sort of chronically dehydrated because you're not really used to drinking water, you don't really like water, you don't like the taste of water, you'd rather have coffee and or a beer and or a soda or something like that, time to start swapping in a lot more water. The rule of thumb is that you should drink a minimum of one half of your body weight in ounces every day of pure fresh water. So if you weigh 200 pounds, fellas, that's 100 ounces of water per day. And if you're not drinking anywhere near that, you need to slowly start building up and increasing your water intake every single day. Um, add some slices of lemon or lime or a wedge of an orange or grapefruit. Um, you can add cucumbers, fresh mint from your garden. Um, your wife, your girlfriend, your mom, your sister will get a kick out of that when they see you carrying around your grate. Um, maybe like a corksicle bottle. I carry this one on my, on my, keep it on my desk and I carry it everywhere I go. <clears throat> and you can fill it up with fresh water. Um, we use a special filter on our refrigerator to get the, the freshest, purest, cleanest water. You can learn, learn more about these filters um, when you visit my website and check on the resources page. Um, and then um, you can just open up the top of your water bottle and you can add uh, any fruit ingredients that you want to to help flavor your water. So I hope that these detox tips, especially for guys and especially for those with Hashimoto's, um, are helpful for you today. Please do check out my website. Uh, read my latest blog about men and Hashimoto's. Check out some of my other videos about living with Hashimoto's, how to lower antibodies. Um, also, uh, I just posted a video recently about why your thyroid may need more protein. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Please uh, subscribe, like, and share these videos, and I will be talking to you soon. Thanks and have a great day.